we say makes this meter the best is that 99% plus accuracy. That speeds up to 8 mile an hour. And we will see that out on the test stand later on this morning. We're going to go over all of these components one at a time. Now we can physically look at the meter and we can see all of the slots in the meter housing front and back. This is to maximize our vacuum flow across the meter. With the amount of breathing or vents this meter has, we don't have to be concerned about the meter getting trash around it, plugging it up. It maximizes the airflow. For you ready to take it apart? All right, now the reason I wanted you to wait is because there is a little trick to it. Looking at your meter up at the top, you see the black knob? We'll talk about that black knob later, but that is our singulator. And right in front of that black knob, there is a little tab that you push down on. And when you push down on that tab, you can rotate the vacuum housing and it lifts right off. So, looking inside of the housing that we have here, the first thing we see is this white seal. This is our vacuum seal, okay? And it's pretty easy to get out. You can just grab a hold of it and peel it out. Uh, if sometime in the future it needs to be replaced, it's very easy to be replaced, okay? And as we're talking about the components in the meter, guys, what we have found that all wear components in the meter will last a minimum of anywhere from six to seven hundred acres per row. Yes, sir. When we store the meter, and this question comes up quite often, how do we store the meter? Bare minimum, what I would like you to do is physically remove the seed disc, put them in a box. You don't have to hang them on a peg or anything else. We don't have to worry about warpage of the seed discs. Uh, but just take the disc off, clean up the meter, uh, leave it on the planter or put them in their own box. But basically that's the only thing you have to do for storage. The disc will probably last longer than that six to seven hundred acres per row. Yes? Ooh, that's an excellent question. Do we need to keep the disc numbered to the meter? No, you do not. While we are looking at the vacuum meter housing, we notice the little spiked wheel down at the bottom. This is our debris ejector. The sole purpose of that little wheel is to specifically ride along the back side of the disc and if a little piece of debris gets caught in that orifice, it will poke it out to make sure every pocket is getting vacuum and every pocket is filled. Okay? Pretty simple, huh? Now, you will notice that there are a couple, three different debris ejectors on the desk in front of you. Those debris ejectors are color coded to your seed disc. So the corn disc, which is blue, that's the one that is in your meter, has a blue debris ejector in the vacuum housing. So when it is time to change crops, we not only change the seed disc, but we have to change the debris ejector. Okay, it's really easy and we can go ahead and do it guys. You're just going to squeeze the two tabs opposite end of the little spiked wheel and the little ejector comes right out. Our debris ejector is color coded to our disc. So in turn when we put the soybean disc in the meter we will also install the black debris ejector for that soybean disc. because of the material it's made out of and secondly because we've got a lot of ridges and high spots and edges to reinforce that disc so and I know maybe some of you are used to competitive um, seed meters that they tell you to put the discs on a peg in the shop you know don't lay them flat don't stack them against each other our disc 
it is irrelevant. It won't make a bit of difference. Other questions, guys? Yes, sir? Not yet. Right now, the crops that we can plant are, of course, corn, soybeans, sunflowers, milo grain, sorghum, and sugar beets. Yes, sir? Have you ever had a small rock get in the meter? A small rock get into the meter? Yeah, I've, I've seen different debris get in there. It uh, doesn't seem to affect anything. The debris physically can't get to the gear drive on the motor, so that's irrelevant. So if the, if the rock's large enough that the meter will not plant it out, uh, it'll be there until you dump it. Basically, all that is is a cover. Uh, and what we're talking about, guys, is right in the center of the vacuum housing, there is a little black plug pushed in there. Remember this year, everybody in here with their 4900s, they're all electric drive. Next year, there will be the option of mechanical drive on this same meter. So right now we're putting a little plastic plug in there just to cover up the drive, keep junk from getting in there. Yes, sir? It does. Yeah, the question was, what's the little red button on every row unit? And you will notice as we walk around the planters that every planter on every row unit has a little red button. And that is to manually make everything on that row run by pushing that button. So if you think you got an issue, is it, is it my meter not turning? Is it my seed sensor maybe not working? We can go back there and push that red button and everything on that specific row will run. If your, your seed meter will run, uh, if you're equipped with liquid fertilizer, liquid fertilizer for that row will run, and also the insecticide. If we haven't already, let's remove our seed disc. By all we do is twist the black knob in the center, and then the seed disc just lifts right out of the meter. And now we can physically look inside the meter. Of course, down at the bottom is our little gear for our drive motor. Uh, like Brad mentioned, out in the arena, the drive motor itself is a 24-volt stepper motor. Okay? A stepper motor does not have an armature like, you know, we think of an armature and it does not have brushes that wear out in the motor. A stepper motor is physically using a magnetic force to rotate. And if we just physically turn that little wheel, we can feel the, just the slight little notches to the motor. That's it going from one magnet to the next to physically turn that motor when we put 24 volts to it. All right, now next up, we're gonna start getting into making some more of our adjustments. Up at the top of the meter is our singulator. The singulator has specific adjustments for different crops which are in your workbook which are also in your operators manual and if we look in our book where do we set it for corn? Two. So if you rotate your singulator knob to two you will notice that there are three settings within that number two. This is to help fine tune it if for some reason we get into an extra small seed or an extra large seed, okay? But when we get ready to go to the field for the first time with any specific seed, what I'm gonna tell you guys to do is to set that singulator on the midpoint of number two, okay? Also in our books, it gives us our preliminary vacuum settings. So for corn, where are we going to set our vacuum? 18 to 20. Okay? So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to fill my hoppers with seed. I'm going to set my vacuum on 20 inches of water vacuum. I'm going to set my singulator in that 
midpoint on number two, and I'm going to go plant. And I will almost, if it is a normal size seed, I will almost guarantee you it will plant that 99% plus accuracy. Okay? How do we know? How do we know this meter is performing the way it should? How are you going to tell? Double check. Everything is telling you the truth and dig in the dirt behind the planter. It's still the best test money can buy. Okay? Shallow up a row or two, tie up the closing wheels, measure off your one one thousandths of an acre, which on 30 inch rows is how many feet? 17 and a half. Man, you guys are good. You guys are good. So I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. But please double check to make sure everything is working properly. Okay? So that's our singulator. Yes, sir? If you had some really little seed corn uh, and you wanted to adjust that singulator, which way do you go? On the really little corn, where you may get more than one <coughs> seed into the disc, you may want to go a little bit more aggressive to get rid of the doubles. The bigger setting. The bigger setting. Yep. The bigger the setting, the more aggressive that singulator is. Okay? So on a, on a little seed, you may need to go a little bit more aggressive to get rid of the doubles. Or, something that's a little easier, first thing, I'm going to leave my setting in the midpoint of two, and I may back my vacuum down a little bit. Okay? On the smaller seed. Because it doesn't take as much vacuum to pull that seed into the disc. So if I'm over planting a little bit, I am going to try backing that vacuum down to that 18. Uh, you can even go less to get that seed dialed in. When we switch to beans, we are going to, number one, switch the disc. Number two, switch the debris ejector. And number three, reset our singulator to what? Zero for beans. So two for corn, zero for beans. What if I need to remove that singulator to maybe clean out a bunch of crap or anything else that may get into the meter? If you rotate that singulator to one and then go further so that black adjuster tab that sticks up is almost below the surface of the housing, then we can physically lift the singulator assembly right out of the meter. That's simple, huh? And now we can, we can physically turn the knob and see what this singulator does as we make our adjustments from one crop to the other. The singulator does have wear components. And those wear components, number one, the first thing that's going to wear on that singulator is at the bottom. The, two, the tab with the two little ears sticking up. You will notice a little wear on that. And in time, the upper piece, the semicircular piece at the top, will also show a little wear. Yes, sir? Once again, it's that anywhere from five to 700 acres per row. Depends on how many acres you cover in a year. Um, you know, it's kind of like disc opener blades. So you're doing your uh, over the winter prep to your planter and you notice that your disc opener blades are 14 and I don't know, seven eighths. And you got another 3,000 acres to plant. Are you gonna take the chance on them completely wearing out, you know, in the mid season or are you gonna go ahead and replace them? Same holds true for any wear component in the meter. Um, you know, look, you know, give it a good examination after every season. Is there noticeable wear showing? Uh, should I go ahead and replace 
parts of the singulator? Because if you notice that the two wear components to the singulator are held on with Phillips screws, so you can physically just replace those two wear items instead of buying a complete assembly of the singulator. I would, yep. If I'm going to replace the bottom one, I'd go ahead and replace the upper one. Because if one's going to wear, they're both wear. And then to put it back in, you physically take and go underneath that center black housing, and you will see two little tabs that the singulator sets on. And then all you got to do is rotate your knob back up. Just in the future, uh, somebody mentioned a wheat disc. Uh, I know we are working on a wheat disc that someday. Uh, I know we've got to be able to plant edible beans also or different edible crops. So when we get to that point, that is where these other settings will come into play. But right today, you guys planting corn, beans, whatever, uh, you're just going to use zero or two, basically. Sugar beets. I don't know, what does the book say on sugar beets? Two, Two yeah. Uh, with that Milo disc, I know sugar beets are small, but uh, the way the disc is designed and the way the singulator works, that comes out to be the perfect setting for sugar beets also. Okay. The brush lasts, and what we're talking about is that black brush inside the meter itself. It lasts an exceptionally long time. Basically what that black brush does, it's called a wall brush, and it's just making sure the seed stays in that location inside of the meter. Three, four, five, six years, you probably won't even have to look at that brush. Which is another unique feature of this meter that we will see out on the test stand, that the physical amount of seed that is in the meter itself is very, very small. It's just, just a handful of seed. Uh, this way we're not, you guys used to the finger meter or the edge vac meter or even competitive meters where the whole bottom half of the meter is full of seed. We will see when we get out on the test stand that there's very little seed. There's a lot of different ways. Do we want to take the hopper off the row or take the meter off and dump it? That's one way. Number two, we can use our little red button and dump the meter that way because there's very, very little seed inside of the meter itself. Uh, number three, we can physically set a manual speed in the display and we can run that planter setting still. Uh, or, uh, depending on the amount of seed, hopefully you guys judge close enough that you don't have, you know, a bunch of seed in the bulk fill tanks or the hoppers for that matter. Uh, when we get out into the arena, we can physically open the clean outdoors on the seed tanks themselves and see how we get the seed out of there. So a lot of different ways to clean it out. Uh, like I said, a plus is there's very little seed left in the meter itself. And if we plant it empty, <laughs> I mean that meter is empty. It takes every last seed out of it on its own.